Well, hello everyone. This is Barbara Rosgoni. Thank you so much for tuning in to Three Trends to Track in 2018. This is take two, so thanks for all of you who are on take one. We have figured out the technology and we're all set and ready to go. I'm ready to help you get on your success track for 2018. If you're on Twitter, you can tweet me at WiredPRWorks and our hashtag is 3D Social Selling. Thanks so much to Insurance WebEx for the opportunity to spend some time with you today and to every single one of you for all the work you do to bring good things to people, whether it's financial services, information, knowledge, protection, even fun and joy. Welcome. Let's get started with a quote. I love music and I love entertainment and one of my favorite entertainers is David Bowie. We were lucky enough to see the exhibit of his music and life and times and costumes at the Museum of Contemporary Art here in Chicago. And when you walked up the steps, you walked up and you could read his lyrics as you went up. And this is one of my favorite lyrics from David Bowie. Actually, it's a quote more than a lyric, but tomorrow belongs to those who can hear it coming. And I believe that's true. I believe that we need to really listen for what's coming next. And if we can hear it, then we'll be there when it finds us. And today we're going to be talking about a few different things. And I want to let you know that if you do stay on, then I will be happy to reward you with not only one bonus, but also a surprise bonus. So let's get started. And if you've ever been to, if you've ever been to Times Square, New York City, which if you ask a real New Yorker, they'll say, don't go over there, whatever you do. And for me, I can't stay away. I just love looking at all the lights and the people, the tourists and the street art and the street performers. It to me is very exciting and full of energy. And that's kind of how it is if you're in marketing today. People are energized, they're excited, and it's really hard to get them to look, especially if it's something like insurance that they know they need to know more about, but it might not be as fun as, you know, some of the more entertaining things there are in life. So we're going to really talk about how to demystify marketing today. And one of the things we're dealing with is distraction, and that is what happens on an internet minute. This was last year. I'm not sure what's going to happen at the end of this year, but people are on there doing all kinds of things, as you can see. And it's, it's not just watching videos on YouTube or uploading Instagram pictures or being on Twitter. You might not even be on Twitter, but 156 emails are being sent. So that's a lot, 120 new accounts created on LinkedIn every 60 seconds. There's a lot going on out there. And so what is the most important thing to really consider? The most important thing for marketers for the past two years in a row has been customer satisfaction. That's really the first measure of success. And we're seeing this even with sales training. It's not about how do we get new sales. It's more about how do we keep our people that we have happy? Because if they're happy, then we can grow our revenue and we can acquire more customers as we go. And I know this is true. I worked for a company once where they, they like to make products, but not necessarily products that people would buy. And I was always confused about that. And if they would have said, let's develop products that people really love, then it would have been a different situation. So really thinking about customer satisfaction is an important priority. And then when we look at what are the top marketing challenges, then we can see number one is generating traffic and leads for 63% of the companies in this survey. Well, if we look at what financial advisors and insurance salespeople would say, that number might pop up a lot higher. In fact, I've seen it go as high as 92%. So generating traffic and leads is critical. And then we want to think about, you know, what's the ROI of those marketing activities. And it's not just about money. I mean, Facebook ads are really inexpensive if you wanted to run them. It's about your time. To me, time is money. And I see so many people either not investing any time at all or putting so much time into trying to figure out what they want to spend time on that they don't go anywhere and they're stuck and the competition is just racing way past them. So we're going to talk about how to circumvent those challenges today. And what I like to think about is the two types of trails you can go on. And if you have a GPS on your phone, I know most of you do, you can type in your location that you want to go to and put my location now, and it'll give you options. You can have 
uh, a ride sharing company show up to pick you up and it'll even tell you how much it would cost, you could take public transportation, you could walk or drive. So it's up to you to decide, do you want, how quickly do you want to get there? Do you want to take a scenic trail if you're going on a longer car ride? Or do you want to take the cinch trail, which means you're going to get there very quickly and a known proven route. You're going to see everything you want to see along the way and you'll be at the top before you know it. My goal is to be your guide to take you all the way to the top as fast as we can get there without stopping to see all the sites along the way. So if you're ready to get going, let's go. So I'd like to introduce myself. You might be wondering who in the world are you and how did you get to be where you are? Well, I graduated from the University of Illinois and went straight into something called employee benefits. And I called my brother who sold group insurance and I said, hey, Bill, I'm gonna be selling employee benefits. And he said, well, honey, welcome to the insurance business. I said, oh no, it's not insurance, it's employee benefits. And he said, no, it, it's the insurance business. So anyway, I wound up being in the insurance business and I really liked it. I worked for a company called Dun & Bradstreet, you probably heard of them. And our job was to provide leads for insurance agents. And they would come in and talk to us, and pick up their leads, and I was always really intrigued by who did the best. And the ones who are really consistent are the ones who are the proven performers. So after that, I thought, wow, I just wanna be in sales too. So I decided I would be a group insurance sales rep and I would sell to insurance agents. And I was the absolute worst salesperson in the entire world. I mean, I made no sales and I was so excited the day I turned in my resignation. I told my boss I quit and I was very happy. I thought, wow, and he said, well, do you have a job lined up? And I said, no. And he said, well, then I guess you can continue to work with us. I'll just change your territory. And I really didn't want to do it, but I did it because I had no choice. And I wound up being the leader of the company, which was a great turnaround story. And if I can do it, anyone can do it. Then I thought, wow, this is so fun. I'm going to be a national sales trainer. So I did that. I developed programs for Blue Cross and Blue Shield and increased sales by up to 400%. And then I decided to become a business advisor and an entrepreneur. And I, op I opened my own business, Corey West Media, named after my mother and my grandmother, as a way to really help people share stories and connect with communities. And that's what I've been doing all these years. A couple of highlights, I founded Social Media Club Chicago in 2007. And after five years and 60 different events with sold out crowds throughout the downtown Chicago area, I decided to move on to other things, but what a ride that was. I've been a co-author in two bestsellers. You can see online marketing superstars, and social media marketing superstars. I'm a member of the National Speakers Association, a professional member, and I do like to speak. This is me speaking, uh, or getting ready to speak, I should say, at the Million Dollar Roundtable annual conference. And you can see there's no seats in the room yet. And I was practicing, and when I opened those doors, I was just wowed and awestruck by the opportunity to share information with insurance agents. And, and you know, if you study Seth Godin and, and, and people in the marketing industry, they'll say, what is your why? And my why is to take you to the top. So if you're ready, let's get started and let's take off. We're going to take off in 3D. And I came up with this 3D analogy, model, system, to help solve marketing challenges. And the first one we're gonna talk about is dynamic. How do you connect with your customers with PR, which I'm defining as personality and reputation. So there's storytelling that goes into this, the customer experience, but what we're really gonna to start to focus on is your personality and reputation. Who are you? And then we're gonna talk about digital. How do you appear on screens? How do you attract attention? How do you get some more of that screen share with influencers and influencer marketing. And then the third one we're gonna talk about is how to market directly. This is one-on-one -on -one conversation. That's one kind of direct marketing. Another way is really to think about how you're gonna automate and how you're gonna build your brand directly throughout the entire customer experience journey. So are you ready? I am, let's go. Okay, first off, we're gonna talk about personality and reputation. I am a Wealthy Mind trainer, and one of the things we do with the Wealthy Mind is the first thing is we talk about who are you. And while you may have a great handle on what your personality is, and I know some of you are super helpful people, thank you so much for your messages you've sent me, that's a great characteristic to have. 
you might not know how the world sees you. And if you look up here, you can see this avant-garde in description. And this is from a book written by Sally Hogsad called How the World Sees You. I happen to be an avant-garde and I love taking that test because that's really how the world sees me. So you may see yourself as one way, the world may see you as another. If you want to get a clue into what you consider your personal values and your personality to be, all you need to do is look at the five people that you admire the most. And they could be someone in your family, it could be someone that's even in a movie or a book, it could even be an animal that you really admire. And then what I want you to do is write down the characteristics that appeal to you. So for example, if a lion was on your list, what might appeal to you? What's a characteristic of a lion? It could be leadership. And if you had a tiger, maybe bravery, or if you're thinking about how much it, you like your, your house cat, maybe it's being playful or having fun. So really think about what those qualities are. You write them down for each one of the five and then circle the ones that keep popping up the most. And this gives you kind of a, a dip into what your personality is like. And then as far as your reputation goes, it's as simple as looking at who's recommended you on LinkedIn, what do people see when they Google you, or a new thing to try is to ask Siri what she knows about you. I asked Siri, I said, hey Siri, what do you know about Barbara Rosconi? First of all, I was thrilled that she could spell it, but maybe it's because it's my phone, I don't know. But she came back with a really beautiful picture of my sister and I at my son's graduation. And I thought, where did she even find that? It was very odd. And so every few months I asked Siri if she knows me and I get a different look. So those are a couple of things to think about. And also what we want to think about with personality and reputation is it's not just yours, but how do you match up to the people you most want to do the business with, do business with? What do you have the most in common? Then just to put a little bit of a spin on trends and personality, if you like colors for 2018, the color of the year from Pantone is ultraviolet and the color of the year from Sherwin-Williams is Oceanside, a lovely teal color. So even colors and how you present yourself with your marketing is something to really think about. Then also megatrends. What are the megatrends that people are looking for and what are the patterns of opportunity and here we have the megatrends for 2018 from a site called Trend Hunter. And Trend Hunter has listed out all these different areas. And a couple I really want to point out. For instance, we're going to look at uh, up here with nostalgia and youthfulness. Millennials are really into nostalgia. They like things like cassettes and cassette sales have really gone up. Thank you, millennials. And then, if we look at uh, what boomers are into, they're into being youthful and playful. So those are just two examples of megatrends to watch. This is the kind of thing that if you work with small business owners, you can show them this report, it's free at Trend Hunter. And you can say, these are some of the cultural shifts we're looking at this year. You'll see things in there like goth, gothic kinds of foods, black coffee, um, all kinds of rainbow things. And it's just really fun to see what's coming up. Another way to see what your personality and reputation is like is if you're on Instagram. Every year at the end of the year, they show you the nine best photos. And these just happen to be mine from last year. Some years they don't get it right. And I'm, I, I know people like those pictures, but I don't really feel like it reflected the year for me. But this year, I think they did a pretty good job. So really quickly, that's my husband and I in Washington, D.C. after I spoke there at, uh, in the same room as the Washington Press Conference. It's a conference. Uh, dinner, Washington Press Correspondence Dinner. Yes, that's what it was, very historic room. Then my son graduated summa cum laude, which was really exciting. I like to travel, that's at the airport. Then with a, a group of National Speakers Association friends, me teaching at Kendall Hospitality College. I love cake, pie, dessert, so that's there. Uh, then I'm here at a small business conference for Icon and FusionSoft. Then I tried a graphic and that actually got a lot of interaction. I was the, the moderator for a panel on the next level of influencer marketing. And then the last one is a stat. People like stats and this was about social commerce. It says that 75% of people are influenced by something they saw on social media when they buy. So that was kind of fun. So I'd like you to think about 
If you're not on Instagram yet, I'll show you a stat a little later. I hope you'll think about going on there because I love it. But the other thing is really think about what your 2018 goals are and what would you like to see if you're going to do a grid like this? What would your pictures of the year be like? So that's uh, something to think about. What's the benefit of personalization? Well, if you don't have personality in what you're doing, people will walk away. And so these are some stats on, on what happens. 52% uh, of consumers are likely to switch if the company doesn't personalize communications, and 65% of business buyers are likely to switch brands if a vendor doesn't personalize communications. So if you don't personalize communications, people will not do business. And that's where we come into a personality and reputation, not just yours, but theirs. And if you'd like to really flesh out or design or make a model or draw a portrait of your top targeted clients, then you can go to the site, makemypersona.com. It's from HubSpot. And you can develop ideal personas. So for instance, if you're looking for business owners who own the company, then Tom would be a good persona for you to have. So you can put what Tom's personality is like, what he's interested in, what's, he's, what's important to him. If you're looking for someone who's just starting out in the work world, maybe that would be Hannah, who started in human resources right after she graduated for college. Or maybe you're looking at people who are more mid-career, who are parents, and that would be Frank and finance. What you really want to do is you want to look at the personality and reputation of the people and the companies who provide you the best and highest lifetime value. So it's, it's something that you can use and share with people in your agency to really get some consistency on the type of people you're trying to look for. And plus it's fun. You can make it up, you can make it how, who, be whoever you want and you can have a collection of people. So it's a nice fun exercise to do. How do you wrap this up if you're doing personality and reputation? And this is content marketing too. How do you put this all together? And for our clients, we use what we call the Wired PR MBA strategy. Wired stands for words, intentions, routes, experiences, and design in 3D, which is digital, direct, and dynamic. With words, we're looking for keywords here. And those are, if you know anything about search engine optimization, keywords are going to be the words that people use to find you. So it could be your location. It could be the name of your agency. It could be the type of business you specialize in. It could be products that you work with. And it can also be your tagline. It could be your summary that's on LinkedIn, it could be your bio, but words are very important. Then the next is intentions. What are your goals? Why are you doing this? What do you want to have happen? And it's not just for you, it's also for the people that you're going to be talking to and working with. So what, what is everyone's intention? And then what are the routes you're gonna take? Keeping in mind that the route should be as express route oriented as possible, the next one is experiences, and customer service is a term that's still being used, but customer experience is the one that people are really using all along the spectrum of starting and all the way through referrals, community, all that. So experience is important. And then the last piece is design. Digital, direct, and dynamic. So on screen, every touch point, and then how are you gonna make it engaging and emotional? So that when we wrap it all up, what you have is a marketing and a business accelerator. It's a simplified strategy. It's something that I presented to lots of different groups, including the Federal Reserve. And I've worked with other creative agencies, PR agencies, digital agencies to really help them integrate this into their process because it's easy to get and it covers all the bases. Yes, you can go and be more and more detailed, but if you want a top line way to really get your thoughts down, it's a really good structure to have in place. So that's the personality and reputation part. Now we're gonna go into influence. But before we do there, let's do that. Let's stop here. And this is a picture from Rocky Mountain National Park. And what happened here was, I, I've been there before with my husband. We had some really, I think we spent almost a week there, but this was a trip where it was a breeze through. I think we had a, a total of two hours. And if you've ever been to Rocky Mountain National Park, you know that is ridiculous. There's no way you're gonna see much. So rather than get frustrated, we went to a ranger center and we said, we wanna see as much as we can. And we got a guide who gave us 
a really, really good route to take. It was mostly driving, but we got to see waterfalls, we got to see vistas, we got to see, she said at one point, it's gonna look like you're in the sound of music, which it did. We got to go to the top, we got to summit, we got to see elk, we got to see marmots. In, in short, it probably was as exciting of an adventure as I've ever been on. But the reason it was is because we talked to the person who could show us the way. And I feel like social media is like that sometimes. You know, when you get on social media, if you log into Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, wherever you go, there's so much you can see. And who knows where to start, what you're going to do, where you're going to go. And sometimes people think that's not really a part of their lives. You know, social media is just not really what I do. I still talk to business people that I can't believe they say I don't do anything with it. Well, whether or not you choose a career, and you could say that's not part of my job, <laughs> Social media does play an active role in your life and your career. It really does. Whether you feel like it does or not, it's something you're going to have to think about. And so how can you really raise your influence in social media without becoming somebody who's super influential, like a sports player or a musician? And one of the, first of all, let's talk about what is influence. And this is from dictionary.com. And influence is number one, a person or thing that influences. The most powerful influencer belief of beliefs is direct experience. And number two is a person who has the power to influence many people as through social media or traditional media. And companies look for Facebook influencers who can promote their brand. So that's influence. Influencer marketing is hot, hot, hot. I got to speak at the very first Influencer Marketing Days conference. I was a keynote on day two. And I've been an influencer for a long time in a lot of ways. This is a picture of me going to CES, which stands for Consumer Electronics Show. Although they never want you to say that, they just want you to say CES. And I was invited to go as a member of Sears Blue Blogger crew. There's our crew. I'm mentioning it because right now CES is happening in Las Vegas. People told me it's the biggest conference you'll ever go to, and it is. I mean, it's, it's majorly exhausting. It's, it's crazy, it's wild, it's exciting, it's fun. I had a blast. But how do you, if you're a company, how do you even get any attention? I mean, you know, they bring in celebrities, they have all these shows. The Sony PR press conference was the most exciting press conference I've ever seen. It was about Elvis and that, that just blew my mind. But that probably, I don't know how many millions of dollars that budget was and who has a budget for that. So Sears decided they're gonna break through it all and take this band of bloggers. So they took five of us out there. They paid for our way, they paid for our hotel, which was nice. And in exchange, we did social media updates, a video and wrote content. So we were the representatives on the floor, but before that, they got a ton of press. So. They took us, we were all representing different places. I was a social media small business influencer. And so then, uh, why does it work? You know, that was a few years ago. This is a stat, the very recent stat, it, does it work? Well, yeah, influencer marketing content delivers 11 times higher ROI than traditional forms of digital marketing. Look at that, it's just really a lot. And we've got a, a little Snapchat ghost over here. You can see this. this is also in New York City when I was speaking there in influencer marketing days. And even if you're not on Snapchat and you don't think it's something you want to do, maybe you have customers whose kids are on Snapchat. And I know that Snapchat has geo filters, which are little frames that show up when you're somewhere. And so for instance, I'm in Glen Ellen, Illinois, and for our 4th of July parade, my kids were so excited because, wow, Glen Ellen has 4th of July parade Snapchat filters. Well, yeah, they do. And, and they could have had an insurance agency 4th of July parade filter. I mean, it's, it's something to think about. I mean, you can think about being out there, but the whole goal is how can you be where these influencers are and social media is a place to find it. So why are companies turning to influencers? Well, people are blocking their ads and maybe you're one of them. It, almost 22% of people are blocking ads on their desktop and about 10% on mobile. If that's something you would like to do, I would recommend you install the browser called Opera. And Opera also has a VPN, which is a private network, and it will make your browsing safer. It's something to think about, and I would recommend doing it. It also runs faster than Chrome, so you won't be using as much battery life. And you'll also be blocking those ads. So let's look at ages with influencer marketing and millennials. 
they really see every millennial almost sees themselves as an influencer and they really feel like they should help guide purchases for their friends, family, and peers. And that's really how, what they see themselves doing. That's why they like to leave all kinds of reviews. And I know I was talking to one of my kids and I was telling them about this restaurant experience I had. And they said, well, that definitely deserves a Yelp review. And I said, yeah, I guess it does. And, and had they been there with me, I'm sure it would have been a Yelp review. And this is a wall of TVs from, um, House of Vans, it's a combination skate park, event center, they have art shows and all kinds of different things. I happened to be there for the Crate Diggers Festival and it was an interesting mix of generations. So for me, it was fun to see all the generations come together. And I feel like these millennials are influencing purchases for every generation, not just their own, but they are really helping guide those decisions. So it's important to keep them in mind. If you're wondering how big is social media, boy, when we got started in 2007 with Social Media Club, everyone thought that we were ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, who would want to spend time on their phone and who would want to talk about what they do? Well, now eight out of 10 people are on social media. So when I hear people say, well, I don't know if our customers are on social media. Yes, they are. And if you're wondering where they are, this is, an overview of everybody with Pew, from Pew Internet. This is not going to be your community or your state or even the USA, but it will give you a look at where people are. And you can see on LinkedIn, 45% of the people on LinkedIn have an income level of 75,000 or more. So it's a little bit more of um, an affluent market. And it also says actually that 76% of the people who are in that market are on Facebook. So it's a good, good place to look at both of those. I did tell you I was going to talk about Instagram again, and I'm bringing it back. Uh, Instagram was a place that was really just for people to share photos. It's a very aspirational platform, so a lot of people will share photos of food or fashion or travel, but it's also becoming more of a business spot. And you can see how the number of business profiles has increased, as have the number, as have the number of advertisers. So it's becoming more and more of a place to do business. If you're interested in influencer marketing, I would encourage you to listen to this podcast I did on Influence Pros. And what you're gonna hear me talk about is how to use micro-influencers, not the, the big influencers. There's some sisters and their last name starts with K. I think they charge about half a million dollars for every update on Instagram. But what we're finding is the big major influencers are not getting any activity. And that's really the key with influencer marketing is we want people to inspire action, not just show something. So really having micro influencers is important. And who might those be in your community? Well, they could be an organization. It could be a forest preserve. It could be a park district. It could be a group of moms on Facebook. It could be a group on LinkedIn. A networking group so you want to look for really those centers of influence those spheres of influence and even before social media if our client had an event I would look at who are the people that everybody knows in the community and make sure that they were invited to the event because I wanted to take pictures of them being there so you can look at your community and see who are your celebrities in your community and you can also look at pets so if you're looking, one of the things I, I recommend is that people share information from influencers online. So on LinkedIn, if you follow people like Tony Robbins, you know, you can like what he has to say, you can comment on it, you can even go so far as to write a post that mentions his comments. And if you have clients who like dogs and cats, then and I'm sure you probably do have some customers who have a dog and a cat, then you can consider what are the influencers doing in this world. And for instance, there's the French Bulldog, that's Manny the Frenchie, who I met at the White Sox social suite. They kicked it off and I was one of the influencers invited to that. He is a very social dog and I cannot believe how cute he was and how excited he was to post for pictures. I've never seen anything like it. So how, really, are these pets influential or not? You know, this is from Forbes. So let's see, do they really have any followers? Oh yeah, 68 million across all the network, 68 million. And so what we're seeing is, you know, it used to be CBS, ABC, NBC would have 68 million people, but now dogs and cats. So the world is changing and influence itself is changing and you really need to be where these people are. 
If you're looking for companies that have influence, there's a, a, a site called Clout, and they do a social impact ranking, and they've scored the financial services companies. So if you were looking at companies you wanted to share that had influential information, these are some of them. You have an influencer score, so to speak. It's not really called that. It's called your social selling index score through LinkedIn. And what it does is it measures your ability to establish your professional brand, find the right people, engage with insights, and build relationships. For this person that we're looking at, they need to really engage more with insights. And I like it because it gives you ideas of how you can really improve your LinkedIn profile, and when we do social selling training, it's really fun to go around and, and have the different salespeople in the room compare their score, and then they get really competitive. So uh, if you're looking for KPIs on how to encourage your sales teams to do a better job, comparing LinkedIn scores is a good place to start. So let's wrap up influence, and when we talk about influence, Influencer marketing, these are some strategies you, you, you should use. First of all, target who you want to reach. So who are these people and where are you going to find them? And really think it uh, beyond sports figures and you know, major celebrities. Really, we want to think about who are the influential people in your town and how are you going to target them? Are they on social media? Or it could be, if it's not a person, it could be a restaurant. It could be, like we mentioned, uh, forest preserves. So where is there a lot of interaction going on online? Engage with them. So if it's a place that has, let's say, uh, it's a place that's a takeout cafe that has a lot of social interaction, you can engage with them if they're on Instagram and maybe their dinner tonight is shrimp creole and you could kind of, wow, that looks really good. We'll be by to pick some up. So it's as simple as doing that. If you want to have an event and invite influencers, that's another way to do it. Keep in mind that if they are really pro influencers and these are people who are used to being compensated, then they will expect some kind of a reward. It could be a free dinner, it could be an article of apparel, it could be a piece of technology. But if you give them anything above $25, they're gonna to need to disclose that and either put ad or sponsored. So that's another thing you could do if you wanted to uh, do an ad campaign, you could do that. Another way to think about influencer marketing is to band together. So if you have, let's say that your, your specialty is small business insurance, and maybe it's the, the key principle, so you band together with a local accounting firm, a law firm, well, you could do bookkeeping if there's no crossover with accounting. Uh, maybe it's a top realtor. And so you have a team of people who are like, the elite or the luxury service folks and you, you don't have to position yourselves that way although you could but you could make an agreement to really be each other's influencers and to share information and really make sure that it gets out i want to recommend this book it's by robert cialdini i just love his work and you can see his principles of persuasion here there are six the first is reciprocity so if you give someone something they feel like they have to give you something back Another is scarcity. There's only so many, so you better buy it now. Authority, they wanna deal with people who have authority. Consistency, so make sure that what you're doing is gonna be planned and it's gonna be ongoing. Then people have to like you, and a consensus means social proof, which means that everyone agrees that you're okay. So you're kind of like pre-qualified. There's always that no like and trust factor. So if people do speak out for you, then you're almost pre-qualified. So in the book, a couple of things I, I'd like to recommend that you look at, and I do feel like this is important, we're gonna go into automation next, but it's kind of like a, a good bridge. So to think about how you're gonna automate your conversations and your flow of conversation or your sales calls. And two examples that popped out to me in the book, one was for a person who sold home alarm systems, which isn't quite your area, but there was a person who was really hitting it out of the park. And so they got a researcher and they wanted to go out with this person and see why they were closing so many sales. And this person said, no way, he wasn't going to share. So finally, they did get in the car with him. They went out. And same thing happened at every call. Every call, they would go in and they'd meet the couple that wanted the home security system. They wanted a quote on it. And he'd give them some paperwork to fill out. But you know what? He always forgot something in the car. And they just left the door unlocked so he could get back in and he'd go out to the car and come back in with whatever he'd forgotten every single time. 
So subtly, he built up trust to leave the door open for him, and he closed a lot of sales. Another example, I don't know if you've ever had this, where people say, oh, I don't have the money, I can't spend that kind of money, and, and price seems to be an objection no matter what kind of sales you're in. So another example was of a, a company where before people even brought a price or they sat down to talk about the proposal, they'd say something like, well, you know, I'm not going to charge a million dollars. And they'd say it kind of funny and everybody would laugh. And for some reason, no one ever brought an, up an objection to price after that because the million dollar figure was mentioned. So there are things to test and look into because I feel like a lot of times it, the more of a track you can run on and the more you know what works, the better off you're going to be. And after all, we're on the cinch trail, aren't we? So that's influencer marketing. I hope you'll test it out. Keeping in mind, this is something that's been around for a really long time because it works. But now the twist is that it works 11 times better on digital marketing. So give it a whirl. The next thing we're going to talk about is automation. And automation is a technique, method, or system of operating or controlling a process by highly automatic means, as by electronic devices, reducing human intervention to minimum. And I know that said electronic devices, but anyway. <laughs> so we're gonna talk about software automation. And I think this also applies, it doesn't really have to be electronic devices, but people, you know, how are you really gonna automate what you do? And the more automated it, you are, the better off it'll be. It's kind of like when you're gonna make a recipe. There are step by step by step, and if you follow the recipe exactly, you're pretty much guaranteed to get what you're supposed to have. If you're missing an ingredient or you forget something, then it might not turn out that way. So automation really helps contribute to good results. You might be wondering, well, where do I get marketing automation? Well, there's a site called g2crowd.com, and g2crowd has peer-to-peer -peer reviews. And what we see here is a grid that compares the marketing automation software, and you can sort it through all small business, mid-market, or enterprise, and this is sort of for small business. So if you go here, you can read about people's referrals, you can read about their testimonials, recommendations, reviews, it's really more reviews than anything else, and you can see what the high points are and what the watch points are before you make a decision. It's not just about marketing automation, it's about a lot of different things that you can use for your business, so definitely check out G2 Crowd. So now we're thinking, well, what can we automate? So, well, let's talk about what are the most effective tactics used for lead generation. And here are, here's the list uh, from this company. And this list may not be the same as it is for your company. So you need to really think about how do you really get those leads? And, you know, networking isn't on here, but maybe that's because we're talking online. We're not talking in person. But maybe you even want to think about how do you automate your networking? What events are you going to go to? What are you going to say? Who are you going to check in with? One thing I like to do before I go to an event is a lot of times it lists who's going to be there online. So you can go online. You can check people out on LinkedIn. You can connect with them. And if you feel like, wow, that's going to take a lot of work, just connect with the speakers. I'm always amazed at how many people do not do that. And as a speaker, it's really, really nice to have someone connect and say, I'm really looking forward to your talk. It just makes you feel good. So that would be a nice thing to do. And that's something you can automate. Of course, it's not going to be software. You're going to have to use your, your own, um, you could use a calendar for that or write down what, like if you have a recipe that you want to use over and over again, you might have it memorized and you might think you have your networking recipe memorized, but you probably don't. So write it down and make sure that you're going to automate it. Now we're looking at B2B marketers, content marketing tactic usage. And you could see that on the average, this is B2B, you might be to C, B2C or you might be both. But an average number used is eight. That's a lot. Eight different tactics. That's a lot. So what I like to do is think about how can we repurpose content. And if you heard me on my last webinar, we talked about how to use the LinkedIn Big Rock strategy, which is simply gathering together a group of maybe 10 to 12 different people that you're gonna interview. You're gonna turn it into an ebook. It could be a series of podcasts, webisodes, could be audio, video, and then you can break it up into social media content, blogs, put it in your email newsletter. You can put it into all these different slots, and so you've 
maximized your efforts, minimized your cost, and really you saved a whole lot of time because if you can put everything together, their, their overarching message is the sophisticated marketer's guide. If you can put everything together in an umbrella and deliver it that way, it, it does a lot of different things. First of all, it's easier for you. It expands your area of influence because you're gonna be working with more people. It makes it easily deliverable. And it just gives you a lot more power than trying to figure out, well, what am I gonna put up you know, for this day? And it really helps with personality and reputation too. When we do our social selling workshops, I ask people, well, what are you gonna post? I'll give them examples like Valentine's Day. What are you gonna post for, oh, let's say the first day of spring. Uh, what are you gonna post for the Super Bowl? And then they have to think about that. And that's really something to, to that's why personality and reputation is so important because then you know exactly what you wanna do. And it also plays into how you're gonna position all this strategy. So really think about how consistent and cohesive you can be. And one way to do that is to look at your buyer's journey, or it could be your sales process path, whatever you want to call it. This is just one approach. What I'd love for you to do is map it out and really figure out, you know, how do people find you? And what you might want to do is flip it upside down and start with the end first. That's a really fun way for me to figure things out. I'll write my goal and this is what happened. So someone bought a new policy for you. How did that happen? And what has to happen to make that happen? And then you backtrack it and you go all the way through. You can start seeing patterns and then you also want to start looking for areas where people drop off. So what happened? Why did you lose? Did you, are you continually losing prospects to another person or to a different com company? What happened? And so you really want to keep track and make sure that you plumb, if you will, you really want to plumb it and just really look for leaks along the way so that you make sure that it's as strong as possible and it's a really strong path. It's not like little stepping stone. It's a really good, solid bridge. So map that out and also think about your KPIs. This is an area that I see a lot of companies not really tracking. And the social KPIs could be impression, reach, number of engagements. We've got a lot of different things here. Keeping in mind that if someone shares your update on social media or likes it, it depends on who that person is. You know, it's, you could have a person on LinkedIn who was a, uh, one of the super influencers who would like it and share it. And then all of a sudden it gets out to tens of thousands of people. Or it could be your next door neighbor who liked it, which is still okay because maybe they're their relatives saw it and now they want to talk to you. So you can never underestimate what's going to happen when people share your social media information. But we do know, this is from salesforce.com, that the continued attention yields big benefits. And you can see all the different ways it helps. It pretty much just guarantees that you're going to have a really strong, successful business if you really pay attention to the personalized journey. You really want to have a customized, personalized journey all along the way. One of, those, one of the ways to do that is to come across as a person who is organized and is easy to do business with. And what I like to use is a scheduling, for the very first time I talk to someone, I like to have a scheduling system for them. I did have one person who wanted to talk to me and I kept track. We went through 26 different emails to really schedule an appointment. That doesn't happen with this. This is from Acuity. And what happens is if I meet someone at a networking event and that would go into the next networking recipe is uh, follow up with them and say, if you want to schedule a time to talk, here you go. Now, if you're the type of person who absolutely loves doing coffee talks in person, that's great. Maybe you want to set up a certain time of the week that you do that. But I love this because the people that want to talk to me are usually super busy and your clients might be that way too. So it's a first touch just to get to know you call see what's going on. Most of the conversation, I let them talk. I just listen. I might give them one idea. I don't try and sell them, but I do want to know what's going on because not everybody's a good prospect. So it's also good for prospecting. And if you come across as a nice person who has good ideas, then you know they'll recommend you to someone else if, if you're not the right fit for them. So this is right on my blog, which I love too. You just put it right on there. They go to the contact page and boom, they sign up. And then it sends everyone reminders, including me. So it's a good way to stay in touch. 
So now with automation, we've talked about how to, you know, all along the path, you want to look at awareness, interest, desire, and action. Really think about how you're going to keep them in your system, how you're going to keep them warm and happy and comfortable to get them to the destination you want them to go to. This is a, a picture out the window at O'Hare, and I'm always just really impressed when my luggage goes into check baggage and it comes out on the other end. I don't know why, I just, I just find that like to be a marvel, one of the seven marvels of the world. I thought that was cool until I went on a backstage tour at a hotel in Las Vegas where they send the luggage on seven miles of conveyor belt to get where it needs to go, seven miles. So your customer should not have to go seven miles on a conveyor belt to do business with you. And really, if you can think about how to automate all these processes along the way, and even just take a day where you write down what you do and figure out how you could make it faster, better, or smoother, then that helps everyone out. Because our goal is to really save your time and to really allow you to use your talent as much as you can. So today, we've talked about three trends that you can use to solve your 3D marketing challenges, keeping in mind that these trends are really takes on things that have been working for a while. So they're not part of the shiny object syndrome world. They're really things that work. And the first thing is dynamic. You want to connect with your customers on a PR, personality, and reputation level. So first of all, you want to really get to know who you are. You want to check your personality online, and then you want to really match your personality to theirs. Doesn't have to be a complete match, but let's say that you really, really resonate more with fishermen than golfers, then that's a little thing, but it's something to consider. So really think about your personality and reputation. The next thing we talked about is digital, and how are you gonna attract attention with influence? You may have a small social media outreach, Maybe you don't have a huge network, but that doesn't mean that you can't upsize when you connect with other people and organizations who have influence by either commenting on what they have to offer, writing a post about what they have to do, or doing the, the strategy, the big rock strategy, where you actually produce an influential piece of content that can be repurposed in so many different ways. Last part is direct. How are you gonna build your brand with automation? And it's kind of like, you know, what kind of a workout do you want to do? And if you really are going for the marathon, there's a lot of things you need to do. And if you're a bodybuilder, you need to really work out a lot. But if you're someone who just wants to be in shape and move faster, you can automate a lot of processes, save time, and you can do so much more. So that's what we've been talking about today. We talked about should you take the cinch trail or the scenic trail? And I hope you've decided the cinch trail is the right one to go on and you can choose your path. That's totally up to you. I'd like to get you started with a 40 point LinkedIn checklist and here's where you can go to download it. When you get there, this is what the site is going to look like. This is called the landing page and a landing page is a way to really automate what you're doing. This is set up through Infusionsoft. And so it's, this was really easy. I did this myself and it was quick to do. So all you need to do is give people the offer, they sign up, and that's the step one. That's how you can really get people into your system. So that's the landing page. And then again, this is where you get your checklist. Leave it up for a second. This 40-point checklist is something that I came up with. This is actually what we use when we work with people and companies to audit their LinkedIn presence. And for companies, we've worked with one of the companies we worked with is a law firm on Broadway in New York, in Manhattan. And they're one of the top companies in the country, but their LinkedIn profiles were all over the board. We had people who had really fabulous profiles and other people who were at the top that really didn't have much going on. So we went in and reworked the entire company from the top down and we did recommendations for every single one. This is the exact same system that we use. So I hope you enjoy that. So you have two choices. If you're going to do the scenic DIY route, that's okay. Some things to think about. It probably won't save you money. It's probably going to increase your time and your risk and a couple other things. And plus it is do it yourself. So if you think you're good at figuring this out on their, your own, that's fantastic. It really is. It, on the other hand, if you say, wow, I think I need some help here. Yeah, there's a bit of an investment, but it's going to help you manage your risk. And it's really going to leapfrog you and get you started and get you where you need to be in a competitive mode and it's really gonna save you time. 
So how do we do that? I have a 12-step transformation system. I won't read all of these, but you will get a copy of the slides. And this are really the three core concepts we walk you through when we really help you reframe your business and transform it. So our 3D transformation success map, this just is an idea of how it works. And if you're interested in it, I would, or if you have any questions about marketing at all, I would love to meet you. And you can schedule your discoveries call today. All you have to do is go to that site. You'll see the, it's the contact page we talked about before. And I'll spend 20 minutes with you talking to you about what your biggest challenges are. And I'll give you one or two good ideas. And if you would like to enroll in the course, I really like to talk to the people who sign up for it before they do to make sure it's a good fit for both of us. We can go over that as well. But sign up as soon as you can. I do have a limited amount of slots available and I would love to meet with you. So that, again, that's what the page is going to look like when you get there. You can choose, do you want to do the coffee talk or client exploration? Either one. It's a little bit about me. And I just want to thank you for everything you do. I, I appreciate your attention today. But more than that, I appreciate what you do for all the people that you serve, all the families, all the clients, all the goodness that you bring into the world. And I would love to be your guide and take you on the cinch trail to get you to the top. Thank you so much. I wish you all the best and have a fantastic day.